Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Tawal Man. And today we will understand how to detect common method biasness using marker variable approach in Smart PLS. Common method bias can occur when both the independent and the dependent variables are measured within one survey using the same response method. Indeed, this is very often the case and thus there have been extensive discussions in various research fields on how to recognize, avoid and control for common method bias. The presence of common method bias can lead to spurious relationships between variables and result in inflated or the distorted findings. It can undermine the validity and the reliability of the research outcomes. One example of common method bias. Let's say participants who generally have a positive attitude towards fruits tend to rate taste, appearance and nutritional value higher for all the fruits regardless of the specific characteristics of each fruit. This common positive bias and responses can create misleading impression of stronger relationship among the measured variables which are taste, appearance, nutrition value than what actually exists. As a result, the same analysis may overestimate the impact of these variables on fruit preference leading to the bias conclusions. Four reasons for common method bias. The first one is method effects. Second, social desirability bias. Third, common rater bias. Fourth, the temporal effects. First one, method effects. The specific method effects used to collect data can introduce biasness. For example, using Likert scales or responses category that are poorly defined or ambiguous may lead to response patterns that are not entirely accurate or consistent. One example of method effects in common bias method is the halo effect. The halo effect is a met method effect observed in a research studies where an individual's over impression, overall impression of a person, product or entity influences their perception of specific traits or qualities related to that entity. In the context of smartphone study, using a single overall rating scale for participants to rate the specification with the smartphone can introduce the halo effect. If the participants have a positive overall impression, they may rate each specific feature that is design, performance, battery life and camera quality more favor favorably regardless of their actual quality. So if I think that this mobile, this cell phone is uh, the good quality one, then I will definitely tend to rate design, performance, battery life and camera quality on the higher side. Conversely, if the participants have a negative overall impression, they might rate each feature lower than they otherwise actually would have done it. This is a method effects. Mitigation of method effects. To mitigate the method effects and to obtain more accurate assessments, researchers can use separate skills or measures to evaluate each specific feature individually. By doing so, participants' perception of individual features can be evaluated without confounding influence of overall impression. Second, Social desirability bias. Participants may be inclined to respond in a way that aligns with the social norms or what they believe the researcher wants to hear rather than providing the genuine and honest responses. For instance, in a study asking parents about their involvement in their children's education, parents may overstate their level of involvement claiming they frequently help with homework, attend parent-teachers meeting and engage in enriching activities. They might do so to align themselves with the social, social expectations of being actively involved in their children's education. Mitigation of social desirable bias. You can do the mitigation with the first one, uh, with the first method is anonymous or confidential responses. Providing participants with an anonymous or confidential environment encourages them to be more honest and reduces their fear of judgment or negative consequences for providing socially undesirable responses. Framing questions indirectly. Instead of asking questions directly related to sensitive topics or socially desirable behaviors, researchers can use more indirect or subtle approaches to gather information. This can help minimize participants' awareness of the desired response and reduce inclination to provide socially desirable answers. Common reader bias. In cases where multiple measures are noted by the same person, example, a supervisor's rating 
an employee's performance on various dimensions. The rater's perception or the biases may influence the rater's ratings across different variables. For example, the common rater bias is a leniency bias. Leniency bias refers to the tendency for the raters to consistently rate individuals or objects more positively or leniently than they deserve. It occurs when the rater consistently assigns higher scores or ratings across various evaluations regardless of the actual performance or quality being assessed. For instance, imagine a performance review system in a company where a manager evaluates the employee's job performance. If a manager has a leniency bias, they may consistently rate their employees higher than their actual performance which is required. Even if their employees who are underperforming or need improvement, the lenient rater will provide positive evaluations, potentially inflating the overall performance scores. Leniency bias can have several consequences, including inaccurate performance assessments, difficulty in identifying areas for improvement, and potential disparities in rewards or promotions. It can also create a perception of unfairness among employees who may feel that their efforts and accomplishments are not being accurately recognized or rewarded. Mitigation To mitigate the leniency bias, organizations can provide rater training and clear evaluation criteria which should provide the training to the rater to ensure consistent and objective assessment. Calibration ses sessions can be conducted to align raters' perception and interpretations of performance standards. Additionally, using multiple rater or implementing a forced distribution system can help to balance out biases and provide a more accurate representation of the individual performance. Temporal effects Temporal effects refer to the influence of the time-related factors on research outcomes. These effects can arise due to changes in the participants' attitudes, behaviors, or circumstances over the time. Here are a few examples. The first one, maturation. In longitudinal studies or repeated measures designed, the participants may naturally undergo development changes or maturation over time. For example, in a study measuring the cognitive abilities in children over several years, improvements in cognitive functioning may be attributed to the normal maturation process rather than specific intervention or treatment being examined. Second, practice effect. With repeated testing or exposure to a task or measurement, Participants can experience practice effects. This refers to improvement in performance due to increased familiarity or skill acquisition. For instance, in a study evaluating the effectiveness of a memory training program, participants may show better memory performance on subsequent assessments simply because they have become more proficient at the specific memory task. Carryover effects. Carryover effects occur when the effects of previous study condition or treatment persist and influence subsequent conditions or measurement. For example, in within subject experimental design, where the participants receive different interventions or treatments, the effect of one condition may carry over and influence the responses or outcomes of the subsequent conditions. Mitigations The mitigation of the temporal effects can be done with the help of randomization and counterbalancing. Random assignment of participants to different conditions and counterbalancing the order of conditions can help minimize the impact of temporal effects. By randomly assigning participants, researchers distribute potential time-related factors evenly across the groups, reducing the influence of confounding variables. Counterbalancing the order of condition ensures that any order effects are evenly distributed among all the participants. Longitudinal designs. Longitudinal designs uh, are used where data is collected from the same participants over an extended period, it can help to account for the temporal effects. By measuring the participant responses at multiple time points, researchers can analyze changes over the time, allowing for more accurate understanding of the underlying processes and mitigating the impact of the confounding factors. Control groups. Including control groups in the experimental design helps distinguish the effects of time-related factors from the specific intervention or treatment being examined. By comparing the outcomes of the intervention group to those of control group, researchers can identify unique effects of the treatment while controlling for the temporal factors. Statistical techniques. Researchers can employ statistical techniques to account for temporal effects. 
For example, analyzing data using multi-level modeling or growth curve modeling can help model and account for individual growth trajectories over the time. These techniques can provide insights into the specific temporal effects and enable the separation of true treatment effects from the influence of the time. Now, how to detect that the common method bias is present in your model? So for this, we will be using a marker variable. A marker variable is a technique used to detect the presence of common method bias. It is a specific variable intentionally included in a research design to serve as an indicator or a marker for the potential bias. The marker variable is believed to be unrelated to the substantive constructs under study, meaning it should not be related to the other variables in the research model. If the marker variable shows a significant correlation with other constructs in the study, it may indicate the presence of common method bias. There are some characteristics of the marker variable. First is a priori. Researchers might have a prior knowledge or theoretical reasons to suspect that the method of data collection or other methodological factors could influence the measurement of certain variables and therefore the marker variable is introduced in the questionnaire. Measured using the same method as other variables. The marker variable is typically measured using the same research methods that is same scale, same response format as the other variables in the study. This ensures that any common method bias is captured in similar manner. Scale of marker variable is same as other indicator variable. It should be distinct from other constructs. The marker variable should be distinct from other constructs included in the study. This ensures that any correlation observed between the marker variable and other variables should be zero. If it is non-zero, it means that the common method bias is present. Non-congeneric. Non-congeneric refers to the situation where items or indicators within a measurement scale or instrument do not share a common underlying factor or construct. Or in other words, no cross leading should be allowed. Restricting the value. These restri restrictions are intentionally imposed to enhance its ability to capture common method bias and differentiate it from the substantive constructs under the investigation. Now let's see how we can do this in Smart PLS. So this is our model and we want to detect that is there common method bias in our model or not. So let's see, I will delete job satisfaction. And this is my model. I will introduce a marker variable on each construct. Let's see that the marker variable has been uh, captured with the help of GS1, 1, three, four, four indicators are there of the marker variable and we will give the name marker variable. Enter. Now what we will do is we will connect this marker variable here and let's give this name as M1 because we are going to use marker variable many times. Apply. This is M1. Now, same thing I will do on other constructs also. So, what I did is this marker variable, uh, which was measured with the help of four statements JS1, JS2, JS3, JS4, same uh, with a different name M2. I will load it on organizational commitment environmental perception and the co-workers. So uh, marker variable has to be used on all the constructs. Now what you will do is you will go and calculate and do the bootstrapping. Start the calculation. Open report. Go in path coefficients. Now it is necessary that this p value should be more than 0 0.05 so that these marker variables are insignificant. Then only we will say that the common method bias is not present. Here they are less than 0 0.05 and therefore 
it is a matter of worry but uh, there is another part of the story just you will have to wait for it see i again repeat m1 m2 m3 m4 these are mar these are marker variable the p value should be less than 0 0.05 uh, sorry the p value should be more than 0 0.05 this should be more than 0 0.05 so that this marker variables become insignificant then we will say that common method bias is not present so first we will uh, uh, estimate this parts using the marker variable now what we will do we will remove this we will delete this one two three only marker variables are to be removed four and now again i will open report and take the path coefficient now these are the uh, values after removing the marker variable we will note down both of them with marker variable and without marker variable let me expand this so you can see here that with marker variable the effect of co-workers on staying in tension was 0 0.097 right and it was significant without marker variable it is 0 0.094 and still it is significant effect of environmental perception on staying in tension is 0 0.328 and it was significant without marker variable environmental perception and its effect on staying in tension is 0 0.344 and it is significant organizational commitment and its effect on staying in tension is 0 0.343 and it was significant as p value is less than 0 0.05 here, without marker variable, organizational commitment and its effect on staying intention is 0 0.352 and it's still significant. So, you can see that including the marker variable uh, does not alter the results and therefore common method bias is not present though the p-value is less than 0 0.05. Prima facie, the first thing is that this should be more than 0 0.05 so that the marker variables become insignificant. But in any case, if it is less than 0 0.05, you compare the path coefficients. If the results don't alter too much, you can say that the common method bias is not present. So this is how you can detect common method bias in PLS models, the remedial measures, that is how to mitigate it. For more videos on Smart PLS, you can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please refer my playlist in which I already uploaded many videos on Smart PLS.